I'm, I'm always honored to have the opportunity to be here. First of all, as you know, because I'm a Californian, and I was born and raised in California, in Monterey. I had the honor of, uh, as Gloria pointed out, of representing the Central Coast in the Congress for 16 years. Uh, and then uh, had the opportunity to, after serving as Chief of Staff to the President, to return to our home and establish uh, the Panetta Institute, uh, which Sylvia continues to, to run in, uh, at the campus there at CSU Monterey Bay. And our home is and will forever be in Carmel Valley. So I thank you for giving me a chance to get the hell out of Washington and come home. <laughs> Secondly, I'm, uh, I'm always honored because of this forum. Uh, and the Commonwealth Club, I believe, really does provide one of the great public forums in the country. You have hosted some of the great leaders in our nation's history. You have conducted forums that I think carry on a very important tradition. It's the kind of public dialogue that I think was envisioned by our forefathers that allows people to present different views and allows people to listen to those views and form their own judgments on the issues. I can't tell you how important it is to continue those kinds of forums in these times of partisanship and political conflict. We need to be able to dialogue with one another about our thoughts on the toughest issues that face this country. I've had the honor, as Gloria pointed out, to speak at the Commonwealth Club's 100th anniversary. And I'm honored, again, as I said, that you've asked me to participate uh, and have this opportunity again. Now, I've learned a long time ago not to guess where life will lead you. Uh, my career, as Gloria has pointed out, has spanned over 40 years. But I'm fairly certain that none of us would have predicted in 2003 that I would be here one day as the director of the Central Intelligence Agency. <laughs> but when the president asks you to serve, you answer that call. And the chance to lead the CIA, a critical organization in these times, critical times, was an offer that after 40 years of public service gave me yet another challenging opportunity to serve this nation. Without question, this is the most challenging job I've had in Washington. But at the same time, it's also one of the most rewarding. Because of our mission, because of the people who work in this agency, but most of all, because of the duty we have to try to keep this nation safe. The United States, in the 21st century, in the year 2009, truly is at a major crossroads in its management of the economy, in energy, in health care, in deficits, the way we handle our budget and immigration and climate change and terrorism and nuclear proliferation and in our relationship with the rest of a very changing and global world. We are fighting an enemy that is still determined to strike us overseas and strike us here at home. 
the recent arrest of an Al-Qaeda operative in this country, something we haven't seen since the year 2007, only confirms that Al-Qaeda continues to plan attacks on our homeland. Leading an agency that is on the front lines of the defense of our country, particularly in the battle with Al-Qaeda and its violent allies, is an important and very awesome responsibility. And particularly awesome for me, because it oftentimes involves decisions that involve life and death. In eight months as director, I certainly have learned a great deal. I've learned a lot about the substance of our challenges, the men and women, the CIA, the agency's unique capabilities, and how all of this relates to protecting our national security and our freedoms. There is oftentimes a debate about the role of an intelligence agency in our democracy. The fact is that an intelligence agency is critical to the survival of our democracy. Our forefathers blessed this nation with a constitution and a bill of rights that expresses our fundamental beliefs, our fundamental freedoms and values. The leaders of America have a duty to protect the nation and strengthen and preserve those ideals. A strong defense and an enlightened diplomacy are essential to fulfilling that duty. And none of that is possible, none of that is possible without credible and accurate intelligence. No president can make important decisions regarding our national security without knowing what our enemies are thinking, what they're planning, and what they're doing. Our job is to give the president that knowledge so that he can make the right decisions. And that is what the president asked of me when he offered me this job. And that's what I pledge to him. I believe that when the CIA does its duty and does it well, not only do we protect the American people, not only do we provide the important information that has to be provided to our president and our leaders, but hopefully, if we do our job, we can move beyond the divisive political charges and countercharges of the past. We can, as a nation, learn the lessons of the past without getting trapped by the past. Trust is essential in our democracy. Trust is essential between the people and their government. Trust is essential between Republicans and Democrats. And trust is essential to our intelligence effort. My goal in this job is to restore that trust. Neville Chamberlain, after he resigned in 1940 as Prime Minister of Great Britain, found that there was a tremendous amount of political pressure to delve deeply into the actions that he took at Munich to forestall military conflict with Germany. Winston Churchill was bringing pressure to conduct that investigation. And he knew the toll that it would take. And he knew that it would not be particularly wise at a time of war. He said something that I've used often to express the importance of focusing on the future. And I quote, if we open a quarrel between the past and the present, we shall find that we have lost the future, unquote. Nowhere is that more true than in intelligence. The CIA's full and Full attention must be on the challenges we confront today and those over the horizon. 
That's what I want to talk to you about this afternoon, the work of the CIA now and in the future. First, what should you expect of an intelligence agency in a democracy? And second, what is the CIA doing in order to meet those expectations? All intelligence consumers, policymakers I talked about, military commanders, need timely, objective, independent, and accurate intelligence. They must know and understand the world as it is if they are to make sound decisions in the hopes of changing it for the better. Providing that knowledge, that understanding, is CIA's fundamental responsibility. 